All right, today we're going to discuss how wind is created. Now, generally, when we think about wind, obviously we're talking about the movement of air. Now, how, in a sense, does air move? Well, uh, simply put, air uh, is going to move uh, because our Earth is unequally or you know, unevenly heated. Uh, so there must be some unequal heating uh, that is occurring. Now when that happens, we're going to have uh, some differences in pressure that are going to be kind of created between two different places. So I'm going to write down differences in air pressure. Now, uh, on a map, generally what this is going to look like to our next slide, generally areas of higher pressure uh, are going to bring around some, some sunshine. Um, this is mainly due to the fact that you don't have much air moving uh, aloft, which would carry water vapor with it uh, and therefore generate clouds, uh, like you would see during you know, a low pressure day where um, there isn't as much pressure pushing down on the surface, which means there's more, you know, potentially more moisture aloft, therefore giving you uh, the clouds and, and potentially some. <coughs> Now, if we think about this in two different situations, uh, first we'll go with situation, you know, A on the left side. Uh, here we have, again, two surfaces. You have um, uh, some sand and some water, and you know, we have a low pressure over the sand. Uh, this is due to you know the sunshine heating that surface uh, at a, a much higher rate uh, than the surface of the water, and when that heating occurs the air will obviously rise uh, which we know uh, happens to warmer air now uh, what will then happen with your uh, cooler air over the um, over the, the water uh, is that you're gonna have that air move uh, to take its place now what we're gonna refer to this as um, is a sea breeze uh, where you have the wind moving off the water again anybody that's ever been to the beach um, has, has felt this breeze uh, before if you've been there over an extended period of time. Um, that breeze moving off the water generally tends to feel a little bit colder, uh, much does so any breeze because uh, it's colder air than uh, what is currently in uh, play or in position. Uh, again, you have air moving from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. And the same thing happens at night you know, with this same uh, place. So if we look at situation B here on the right hand side, uh, you're going to see um, generally, I mean, because we know that land will also cool off faster uh, than water will. Again, that's one of the beautiful properties of water is that it has the ability to maintain a stable temperature uh, for um, a good period of time, uh, withstand a good amount of energy that it comes in contact with. Uh, so that, that um, when the sun goes down and basically you turn off your heat source the uh, the land will cool down uh, faster um, in a sense creating you know this water area here or the air over the water to be heated a little bit faster um, or have more heat in it thus it will rise quicker than the area uh, or air over the land and that air will then move to take its place. So again, area um, of high pressure moving toward an area of low pressure, uh, creating uh, what is known in this case as a land breeze. Now if we think about the scale, uh, we can move then obviously to a wider image, this of uh, planet Earth. Now Earth is um, heated unevenly as well uh, due to it being a sphere uh, and uh, it also being uh, kind of, you know, tilted on an axis uh, at different times of the year uh, and it, compared to, you know, its position with the sun. Uh, so, uh, generally speaking, your areas around the equator are going to receive more direct heating than that of the poles. Uh, and that's going to create some obvi obvious temperature differences within the air um, as well as the land or surface itself. Uh, which obviously we'll talk about you know a little bit later on when we 
uh, discuss ocean currents and what that does to climates. So again, what you have in a sense here is a giant um, circulation of you know our atmosphere from you know North Pole to Equator, South Pole to Equator, and you know in the reverse. So that air that's heated uh, around the equator will rise, and the colder air from the poles will move to take its place. So we have this general, you know, movement of air across the globe uh, from equator toward pole and pole toward equator uh, based on the, the differences in pressure and uh, ultimately based on your difference in heat between those two uh, different areas. Uh, so there, uh, you basically have it. If we want to kind of recap on here uh, today, Again, how is wind created? Well, we have differences in pressure. Um, again, your area of high pressure will always move to that area of low pressure, which will generate wind. Um, obviously, this would be a good point uh, where you'd want to write down any questions that you have. Uh, regarding the material and see me as soon as possible with them.